USA, oh, Israel, Denmark, Florida, <laughs> Devon, Netherlands, Wales, Czech oh, Republic, my Sweden, Italy, Denmark, London, Sweden, Holland, London, Holland, London, London Giza, <laughs> Holland. Oh, Devon. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see so many of you. Um, I'm also, we've, we've got nearly 100 people and um, I just wanted to thank you for spending your time to be with us. Yeah, thank um, you so much. I know many of us have very, very busy lives and um, it's probably hard to carve out an hour. Well, I intend it to be an hour, but it might go over. So we'll see what happens. Mm. So thank you for being with us. And um, we hope that we make it worth your time to spend this time with us. So, I have been wanting to talk about this for a while and I've only just got the nerve to do it. Um, <laughs> I've had a lot of um, thinking about this and maybe some sleepless nights as well, but whenever I get really quiet within myself, there's just that, that silence within that says, yes, you need to talk even though my head will be trying to talk me out of it. So yes, we thought we would give it a go. And this is being recorded. Um, so if you need to drop out early or whatever, um, we can send you the recording. Ah, so where do I start? Well, first of all, this webinar is entitled Rudy, why I no longer share the three principles. So we're gonna be talking about that and why. Um, but just very briefly for people who may not know myself in duels, um, I originally trained with um, Sydney Banks and Dr. Roger Mills, oh, 2003, that's nearly 20 years ago now. Um, and as you guys probably know, um, I co-created the 3pmovies.com website with my previous partner. Um, and I've been running facilitator training and been quite a prolific three principles based teacher for quite a while. And Jules here, the most marvellous human being <laughs> sure. in the universe. <laughs> I'm, I'm Rudy's wife. And let's see. Well, I've, I've, I'm, a, I'm a nurse mm -hmm. with a bachelor's in marketing who lost a couple children briefly, got one back, but uh, lost one to the non-physical. And yeah, I ran into Rudy here in Hawaii and fell in love and we got married and that's all you need to hear from me <laughs> <laughs> for now <laughs> yeah um so as you guys know many of you have been to our webinars before and we generally talk about fundamental universal pre-existing constants um that we can have beliefs about but they're before and they're beyond beliefs. This webinar is more my or our beliefs. And because of that, um, if you don't like it, you can um, throw bananas at me. No, you can't because <laughs> we're on Zoom. You can close your ears or you could disagree. We, we don't mind. So um, we're not talking about fundamental forces here. We're talking about our interpretation of what's been going on. So I just kind of wanted to say that. And also this may be slightly controversial and um, our intention isn't to upset or offend anybody at all. Um, but sometimes, sometimes life needs a little bit of grit, which can spark evolution. Sometimes harmony can only come from seeming disharmony. It's all one polarity. Um, but we'll do our best to be as respectful as possible. So first off, um, as you guys know, um, I've been a three principles facilitator for a long time, meaning um, someone who articulates what Sydney Banks first saw, the three principles of mind, thought, and consciousness. Um, and I wanted to set up what we're gonna be talking about before we get going. I wanna separate the fact of the principles from the teaching of 
the principles because they're very different. And I'm going to do a diagram. So <laughs> hold your horses. There is a pre-existing pre constant, um, a non-physical, non-form-based spiritual or energetic nature of life. And Christians may call that God. Um, scientists could call that unifying field. Three principles people could call that mind, thought and consciousness, or at least universal mind. Um, you could also call it the Tao. What, whatever, whatever word is good for you is good for you. There's the fact of that. And I'm just going to represent that with an infinity sign. So this is what we call in our book here, the beforeness. Now, <laughs> this is outside of time, but it also gives the appearance of time for experience to be as it is. So when I say beforeness and afterness, I'm not really relating to time. It's just like a, a word a, as a measurement of something. So this great beforeness, okay, let's just call it the field. Would the field work or mm, universal, divine, essence. divine essence, universal mind, whatever you want to call it. So there's the fact of this. Okay. Then what happens as humans, we're so intimately entangled within this. We're not connected to it. Okay. We're not connected. We're literally entangled within it. It's so intimate. It's as intimate as you trying to take a step away from yourself. You can't do it. So we're entangled. We are an expression of this field. Okay. Now what happens as expressions of the field? Okay. We have a seemingly separate experience. Okay. And many of us or some of us can have insight into this field and come up with a teaching, come up with an articulation of it. Now, you could come up with an articulation and you can call it three Ps. Someone else could come up with an articulation and call it non-duality. Someone else could come up with an articulation and call it law of attraction. Um, there's just religion, science, there's, there's just all manner of stuff here. Now, this, someone's interpretation, it isn't that. It's an interpretation of that. Sidney Banks saw, well, he didn't call it the three principles. He, he called it other things um, initially, but let's just say he called it the three principles. Sid isn't the originator of the three principles. The essence has been pre-existing before Sidney Banks. Look at the best non-dual speakers in the world. They're not the originators of non-duality. They are interpreters of non-duality. You look at Abraham Hicks. She, she didn't create law of attraction. She's an interpreter of law of attraction. So, yes, Sidney Banks articulated the three principles in a way that made it, in my mind, very user friendly for the modern age for people to, to experience this. But he's not the originator because the originator isn't a person. It's before the personality. It's a boundless essence before all things in the form. Okay. Now, we're going to be talking about the three principles. Now, we're not anti three principles because I know for a fact, at least my interpretation, <laughs> my interpretation is that yes, we think, yes, we're conscious, yes, we're alive. Yes, there's a universal aliveness. Yes, there's this universal consciousness. And yes, thought is a power that allows us to create experience. So we're all behind the fact of the three principles. We may not articulate it like that 
because we talk about, we don't really break it up into three, we talk about the one, but that's okay. Anyone can articulate it any way they like. What we're gonna be talking about is the teaching. The teaching of the three principles, not the fact of the three principles, okay? So I hope that's clear. Give us a head nod if that's kind of clear so far. Okay, cool. Um, and I have to say, um, I have tremendous respect for, for Sydney Banks. Um, I trained with him, beautiful human beings, being of light. I mean, he was very human as well. I saw him get angry quite a few times. <laughs> but when he spoke, it was very, very powerful. Um, <laughs> So I want to make this more interesting for you guys. So I'm going to weave what we're going to say kind of into a story and try and make it more relatable to you. So settle down, grab a cup of tea, put your <laughs> feet up by the fire. I don't even know what accent that is. This comes out. <sighs> so I'm not going to go into great details, but it's in the book, the second chapter. Um, and why I'm talking a bit about my past is going to be, you're going to see why I'm doing that as I go forward. So please bear with us. Um, like many of you, or at least some of you, I grew up in a very fractious um, early life. Um, I remember being so terrified I couldn't scream on a number of occasions where you get, you're so terrified it gets stuck in your throat and you, you can't make any sound. And there was severe bullying and domestic violence and alcoholism and mental health issues and blah, blah, blah. When I got to 20, I was so seemingly broken, so seemingly alone so seemingly worthless that my life was a living misery and the only thing I could think of to do to get some kind of help was to murder myself. Now, some of you may have been there yourselves at some stage or know people who have. It's, it's not a pleasant state of mind to be in. However, when I was 20, I'd started to learn to meditate. I don't know why that inner silence was, no matter how noisy your mind is, there's always that inner wisdom. Why? Because you're not connected. You are entangled and within this field, this mind. You're not even a part of it. Mm -hmm. you, you're not just a part of it, you are the whole of it in a part. So I had an experience and I felt that the intelligent energy holding my atoms together and making me me dissolved and there was just this becoming all things everywhere outside of time, space and matter. Um, and I'm, again, I haven't got time, but it's in the book. Um, and Jules talks about her experience in the book. Suffice to say, after that experience, it completely blew my heart open. It, it blew my psychic sense open. It completely changed my life. It wasn't something that I'd read. It's something that I'd experienced very direct experience <clears throat> when i came back to england i was so expansive i found that i could envisage things in my mind <clears throat> pardon me envisage things in my mind and they got created in physical reality really quickly because from a very deep state of transcendence or consciousness or inner silence you are enormously creative but that's another topic I found that I could see the energy field around people and things. And I started to do spiritual healing. I started to give people messages that often broke them down in tears because it was so helpful for them. 
I was very expensive. I then had another insight and I felt I became all the suffering of humanity. Again, via meditating and I remember collapsing because I was standing up at the time and I got this big nosebleed and I felt the suffering of, of all of us, all of our brothers and sisters on this planet. And that's when it sparked in me. I cannot rest until I help people. Okay, it sounds arrogant. I'm helping them. I can't rest until I can allow this thing to come through me to help alleviate suffering. Um, and I tried to articulate it. Um, I did NLP, hypnotherapy. I taught meditation, did Qigong, studied psychology. I couldn't articulate this experience in a way that was translatable for people to have that experience. Then I came across the three principles and there started my love affair with the three principles. This was 2003. I came into it very expensive and open. Reminder, I'm not talking about the three principles. Now I'm talking about the teaching of the three principles. You know, when you're in love with somebody, they seem great, everything they do is wonderful. Then maybe for some of us, actually it's not for us, but as time goes by, you start seeing, oh, well actually they've got this ugly side or <laughs> you go, well, actually they're not as cool as I thought they were. You know how the, that, that, that strong heart desire can kind of wear off after a while. That started happening with my love affair, the three principles. Um, I was so expensive. I wanted to help the world. And I, with my previous partner, we created the 3pmovies.com website that it's got like 2 million views now and it's got loads of people interested in the principles, but through my journey, oh, I've had a tremendous amount of judgment. Um, I've been excluded from things, um, work not credited, taken advantage of and I have to say I've allowed this I've enabled this to happen because that expensive experience blew my heart open to generosity and not just the three principles or well, some people in three principles this is humanity in general if you give and give and give and give people will take and take and take and take or well, some people will Again, I'm talking personal beliefs here again, guys. I'm not talking fundamental principles here. Um, and I don't really want to talk about it, but all I can say is through my journey, I just lost my love affair for the three principles. The teaching. The, the, sorry, the, the teaching of the principles and the way in which things were being done within the community. And I spoke out try to make things more inclusive, try to make things more, more kinder, try to make things more expensive and diverse. And I got banned from talking at various events because I was speaking out. I had all of my videos that I co-created my ex-partner that I went bankrupt over creating, I gave to an organization and they didn't credit me. And I said, could you at least put our names as being the originators of all of this material that took us two years to film and I got called arrogant. So my expansiveness started to contract um, and I found I lost my voice. I was told when I started talking about this original insight I had, I got told, no, you can't say the allness because Sydney Banks calls it the allness. I got told off because I was talking above my grounding. If I was interested in following, I don't know, anybody else outside the principles, I was going off track. There was this thing that you shouldn't meditate. And up to that point, meditation was so damn helpful for me. So I tried to be a good three principles person and I stopped. I just stopped doing a lot of stuff that had 
was really helpful because I was trying to fit into this, the, not the three principles, the teaching of the three principles box. And I felt that my wings were clipped and I tried to be a good teacher. Many of you have been on my trainings over the years, but I literally felt I've been teaching with one hand tied behind my back because it's this enormous, intuitive, energetic, expansive dimension behind life that was frowned upon to talk about. Now, all three principles teachers are very different and some people talk more expansive than others. So again, this is my personal opinions and it may not be true for many of you. That's just my personal opinions here. Um, why am I saying this? Because there's been many students that have come to us and you've resonated with their pains mm -hmm. um, that they felt that they lost their voice that they were told that they could only speak a certain way and 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 teach in a certain way and my heart i mean i i didn't i've never had experience with the principles but i've had experience with other things um i was raised in a church and mm. so i felt like I was only allowed to speak in a certain way, follow a certain path. I hope you don't mind me interrupting you. No, go ahead. But my experience with life, my experience with death, um, with following this path and knowing that my true intuitive essence was dying inside, feeling as though I was dying inside, I found myself homeless, living in my car, because I carried such a heavy backpack. I thought that I was doing life wrong, because I didn't look like these other people in my neighborhood. I didn't look like or act like or sound like other people in my town. So I was doing it wrong. And I found myself homeless living in my car with my son, who was about eight years old at that time. And the state came and picked him up. And in that moment, I died. I died. And that was the biggest gift mm. that I could have ever, ever been given. Because I died and I went into this. <sighs> I'm only, I can only draw it. In fact, I'm going to, I need paper. So the very first time I spoke of this, well, I'll tell you, I, I, I only wrote about it in the book and I only spoke about it one time, which I'll talk about it. Oh gosh. Okay, so I saw, what I saw, my whole life flashed in front of my eyes. And I saw that I was encapsulated in this walking, living, breathing hell. I saw that and in accepting that and seeing that and not fearing it and facing it, there was this, I think I say in the book, it's like almost as, as I zoomed out to the cosmos as the cosmos. And I'll explain what I mean. So this is the closest thing I can, I can explain. This is infinity. <laughs> I cannot draw as good as Ruby. This is infinity. This is the, the all knowing. This is the, the oneness. The, the, with, you feel like there's no doubt, no worry, no fear, no aloneness. But I'll tell you right now, what I saw, there's no experience. If you just have one whole being, there's no experience. And so I floated within this oneness and I saw this beautiful plasma like waves coming up out of this oneness. Moving, expanding, contracting. Those are us. This mm -hmm. is us. This is us having the gift of experience. This is the oneness reaching up 
so it can almost turn its eyeball and experience itself. But we have to have a seeming insecurity. We have to have a seeming separateness. We have to have seeming fears in order to experience the non-fear, the non-seeming insecurity, the non. We have to have one and to experience the other. We cannot have this all in the one pole. Rudy and I have these lights that we leave on and they're on the lanai. Sometimes we leave it on. When the sun is shining bright, we do not realize that they're on. We cannot experience the brilliance in the full light. When the sun goes down, they start to shine just like those. Mm. We experience the brilliance because there's an absence of, the, of, of everything that it is. The light, you take the light away. What I experienced is if you take fear away, the non-fear ceases to exist. If you take one away, the other ceases to exist altogether. I saw that we are all just these, these are supposed to be eyeballs. Eyeballs extending out from the great oneness so it can experience itself. Now I'm telling you this, because fast forward, I, they took my son, I experienced this, and my life changed. I'm living in my car, I'm still homeless, but I stopped fearing, doubting, and the insecurities floated away, because I saw that I'm never alone. And I have the gift of experience. We are love given the gift of experience. We are consciousness humaning. While I was homeless, I got a call that my, my daughter was in a fatal car accident. I got a call from my other daughter. And this experience, so I screamed. And then I realized she's okay. I know she's okay because she's where I just left. And so I took this. And I wanted to share, I feel like she wants me to share yeah. with the 2000 people that showed up at her memorial. So you think that, you know, I tried to share it and I tried to wrap words around it as best as I could, but I got gasps. I got, because I wasn't sharing in a way that a grieving mom should share. But I wanted so much to tuck their hearts in because I knew. I know what it's like to have doubt, fear, and have painful emotions just stewing inside your body, feeling alone. I know what that feels like. And my daughter was so loved. So I know the community was hurting. And I wanted to tuck their hearts in. And the only way I could do it is to share my experience. Mm. I got a thousand friend requests, but I did hear lots of gaps. So maybe 50% of the people were gasping the other, it resonated with. Mm -hmm. But I'm so honored today to be sharing this with you. So when I say we're never alone, we're never alone. We're extensions of this exquisite divine. We're love with the gift of experience. And we are separate interpretations of this one. It's just like all the fingers on your hand. They're all entangled. But they each have their own unique expression on your hand. Mm -hmm. I share a lot with our students I want to remind them that there are 7.8 unique perspectives of this oneness. 7.8 billion. Yeah, 7.8 billion. <laughs> billion. And nobody can know what's right for you. Life is not paint by numbers. Life is not you should be doing this, 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 and this if you get it. 
life is a blank canvas of infinite potential for you to create on. We have the five senses that we know, but you know what? There's so many more mm -hmm. senses that people describe as woo-woo, mm -hmm. describe as, well, that's not real. I know because I was talking myself out of it. The reason I'm saying this is because what, what we try to do is disarm our experience, embrace our uniqueness. And honor each other's unique perspective. Honor the fact that we cannot know what's right for this person. And this person doesn't know what's right for this person. Knowing that we don't know, acknowledging that we don't know, we only know our own intuitive essence, what's right for us. We only know that. And we can resonate with others, like I resonate with Doris, and I'm so honored that I get to look at you. <laughs> we can resonate with others. And you know what resonate means? It's a Latin term, resonatia. It means to echo. So there's a harmonic echoing. But if we take the other away, we don't experience the harmony. Oh, okay, I'm done. I don't know why. <laughs> Thanks, honey. <laughs> That's welcome. wonderful. So, I guess my question is, is that um, I got taught how to teach, what to teach, the words to use. All you need is the principles. Don't look anywhere else. And if you did, you're going off track. Or if you were interested in some other understanding, you didn't get the principles. And I wasn't necessarily pointed back within, I was pointed to Sydney Bank's teachings. Now, Sydney Bank is an interpreter of, the, of some of the other diagram of, of the one. Those are interpreters. Yeah. yeah, of the one. <laughs> yeah. And yes, Listening to Sydney Banks is really damn helpful, as I'm sure many of you guys have, or whatever teacher you follow. But a good, in my mind, a good teacher doesn't teach you what the truth is. They point you back to the truth within yourself. A good teacher isn't a teacher or a guru. It's like it's a fellow human being who's human and reveals their vulnerability so you can be vulnerable and be okay with it. A teacher doesn't point you to a teaching. It points you back within to that which can't be learned or contained in a teaching. I, um, when I met Jules, so going back to my story here, I was falling out of love with the principles, you know, the teaching. teaching. Yeah. Um, but I loved the people. I found that I tried to fit into this teaching box. Okay, so as a metaphor again, if you've got the entirety of all things, I'm going to represent it with a line, which is totally ridiculous. And then there's the teaching of that line, and it can be this broad. So now people take that as the principles or as non-duality or as the law of attraction or as religion or whatever you want to call it. And everyone focuses on this as the actual thing. We want to take people back to this before the teaching before the teachers. When I decided to do lots of things, 
like I wanted to create, this was kind of before Facebook got very popular, a, a map of people into the principles wanting to connect with one another. I got told not to do it, but I did it anyway. And it connected lots of people. I got told not to create the three principles movies.com website and I did it anyway. I got told not to start a facilitator train in England, but I did it anyway, hence why I'm kind of banned from talking all over the place. So you have to, what I'm trying to say is follow your own freaking heart. No one can tell you what is right for you. Um, I'm going to read this out from the book. <sighs> Your guidance is not in someone else. It is within you, just as you are. It is not in the wisest spiritual teacher. Your guidance is within you. Please, please, please stop disempowering yourself, looking to others and outside of yourself to something that is ever presently present within you right now, in this moment in this moment in this moment you are unique you are the only one of a kind in the entire multiverse your own heart is the only thing that truly knows what is right for you it's within you nobody else not your spiritual teacher within you not within your friends within you i could go on my point is, is I try to fit in. I contracted myself to fit into a teaching and I stopped expanding how I talk about things until I met Jules. And I literally had to step back from the three principles community. That's why we've been really quiet up until a month ago to find myself again. A spiritual teaching should continually help you find yourself, not take you away from your freaking self. If you want to meditate, freaking meditate. If you want to do yoga, do yoga. If you want to do something that you know is helpful, quit listening to other people or teaching. Freaking do it. If you want to talk about it in your unique way, talk about it in a unique freaking way. Don't try and fit it into a teaching because it's not in the teaching. It's before the teaching. It's not within. I don't freaking care how many followers or best selling books or however someone has, if they're not taking you within yourself, yourself, your unique one of a kind. I can see Chris, Azra, Michael, Melanie, Bob, Joe. You are the only one of your kind in the entire freaking multiverse of all existence. There's nobody like you. You are the only one who's having your unique experience. Do not dim your light because of a spiritual teacher or a teaching. Go beyond the teachings. Throw them away. Go within. So I'm getting passionate now. The other thing. And again, this is opinion. I used to meditate mm. and it was so freaking helpful. I met Jules and started meditating again. And I'm so glad that I did. Oh, no, Rudy Cannard's going off track. He's meditating. This is the kind of crap that I would get if I did anything outside the minutia of teaching. Go back before the teaching. So my question to you. is are what you're learning or teaching or whatever the understanding you're in, is it opening your heart or is it closing it? <sighs> is it making you want to convert your partner to your teaching or is it allowing you to love them as they are? Is it making you more embracing of other understandings and teachings and that diversity? Or is it making you militant that they don't get it and I'm right and they need to learn this? All of these are indicators. Are you going towards your heart or away from your heart? 
if you're going away from your heart, go before the teaching, because before the teaching is pure, unconditional compassion. It's the heartbeat of the universe. I was banging my head against a brick wall with the interpretation of the principles. And there's this great quote by Buckminster Fuller. <laughs> in order to create, sorry, in order to change an existing paradigm, you do not struggle to try and change the problematic model. You create a new model and make the old one obsolete. Mm. So we just skipped out of the teaching of the principle and we started holality, which is just a name that we've created and trademarked. And fundamentally, what we do is we encourage people to go within reflections, contemplations, meditations, whatever they want to do, they can freaking well do. We point to fundamental principles like the law of vibration mm. that, we, yes, we can create from an internal residence. This intuitive expansion, yes, you can perceive more. And yes, we do experience via perception. And yes, we're part of this universal right. mind. So and it's, it's not, not just your five senses either. There's, there's more, whatever, whatever that looks like for you, for each and every one of you squiggly plasma-like waves that are having this beautiful human experience. It's, it's an orchestra. If we just have one banjo playing one string on, or guitar, right, Chris? You know, <laughs> one string, that is not gonna be a, an exquisite, brilliant experience that people would flock to go see. We need the, the, the uniqueness. I cannot say that enough, 7.8 billion unique. That's just people. That's not including trees and bumblebees and birds and beetles. It's this uniqueness. We're living, this is a gift. This, there's no experience. The love, the bliss, yes. But we're love and bliss having a human experience until the day we die. Human mm. is beautiful. It's brilliant. It's colorful. It's unique. And what's right for me isn't right for you. I love meditating, but I don't want to tell you to meditate. If it's helpful, meditate. Um, I do yoga. If you don't like yoga, don't do yoga like... A teacher doesn't tell you what to do and what to practice. He uncovers what is helpful for you and you do whatever is helpful for you. Like we've had so many people go on really expensive programs and they've said, I've lost my voice. I don't, I don't feel sound like me anymore. I don't sound like me anymore. I used to do this and that was frowned upon. And, and so they have these secret conversations, a bit like they're, they're being nefarious if they're into things other than the three principles and it's just all bollocks like <sighs> go before the teaching back to your own unique intuitive essence what is helpful for you what expands your heart a teaching shouldn't make you go onto a facebook group and argue mm. about how right you are, how right your teaching is. You should honor the uniqueness. For instance, I was at a um, meal with a bunch of Buddhists because I used to be into Buddhism. And um, my experience of Buddhism, I'm not trying to say Buddhism here, is, is really quite beautiful, maybe a bit overcomplicated, but kind of beautiful. And there's this one guy who was saying to the Buddhists, I think Buddhism is a part of crap and I don't think it's very good and blah, blah, blah. And what did Buddhists do? They just listened to him, nodded and go, oh, okay, thank you. And they kept on eating. <laughs> they weren't trying to defend anything <laughs> because you don't need to defend the essence mm. because it's, there's nothing that it isn't. But you can defend a conceptualization of the essence and call it a something and defend that, but that's not the essence. You have to go before. And my original insights it didn't make me th th the three principles was a medium for me the best medium i found to try and articulate this and now after meeting jules 
and her beautifully reminding me of my expansiveness before coming across the principles. I'm going back to that expansiveness and I, my teaching has changed and we, it's more expansive. And out of respect for the three principles, we don't call it the three principles, we call it holality. We're having to get out of that whole paradigm because we can't fit into the current way of teaching it. And again, disclaimer, some people talk very expansively, not expensively, but expansively in the three principles. Others are more contracted. And you know what? We're all at different regions of consciousness and every single region will be perfect it's necessary. for people and yeah. necessary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every single region is necessary. We just expand. We have an expanded inside out. A way of, of 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 describing our human experience and expanded so it's sensual and i mean that because we perceive with our senses all of our senses even the ones that we try to talk ourselves out of but if you don't want to you don't have to mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but we're having a unique we have a unique perspective on life we cannot not have a unique perspective mm -hmm. So, um, oh, go ahead. That went on longer than I envisaged. Um, so we may go over the hour, guys. We haven't read any messages. Yeah, um, I heard hike your own hike. Let's have a quick yeah. look. Oh, Melanie, a good teacher facilitates. Yes, beautiful. Um, yeah. Melanie says a good teacher facilitates. Um, facilitate means to make easy. That the term facilitates. So you are helping people's lives get easier, okay, by going to the ease within themselves. Um, so someone said, because it's a direct message, um, there are a lot, there are a lot of judgmental a-holes in the 3P <laughs> community and the world, screw them, hike your own hike. <laughs> nice. Again, there's just a lot of judgmental people, not just within the principles, but within all communities. So it's no different there. Aww. Thank you for eloquently putting into words what I've been feeling for a long time. Thank you. Mm. I felt this recently. Love that you're talking about this. Your authenticity is so important and appreciated. Everything evolves and humans are called to and ready to follow their inner wisdom. We are not here to be clones of anything or anyone. Beautiful. Um, I think what you're doing is wonderful. I did want to say that my 3P teachers do want us to read others' work. Great. We have done holotropic breathing, mm. dance, and other things. I remember some teachers being more old school and it turned me off. What I don't like is the enormous cost that so many teachers charge and how there seems to be more and more levels to get to your mastermind. Mm. Um, personal growth is just that all mediums of teaching that we can to help you grow forward. Keep going. <laughs> um, I experienced, whoops, oops, go down a little bit. Or up. I, I was just, yeah, I experienced okay. what you're talking about. And so left the three P's as well because of the rigidity of it. Anyway, we institutionalize truth. That is what happens. Beautiful institutionalizing mm. truth. I studied 3P and I love this new way of presenting the one. The book is fabulous Aww. and has and has had a wonderful impact on my understanding. Beautiful. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Peter's talking about our book. Um, Azra, um, a breath of fresh air. My experience with teaching the three principles was to was very similar to yours. I found such a lack of integrity and was told to lie about it. Wow. I couldn't do it and didn't so sad thank you for telling your story it is healing for me to hear your honesty oh mm. beautiful thank you ezra um julian the restrictions you experienced i guess served as a perfect motivator for you to do what all creatures uh, all creatures all teachers suggest which is to find your own voice your own interpretation of the infinite and that is what makes you great teachers mm. thanks julian thanks, um we've probably missed quite a few messages there yeah. so i do apologize um our okay my hope isn't to turn you against the three principles 
my hope is for you to stay in the three principles, but to look to the fact of them rather than what people made up about them. It isn't to turn you off being religious, it's to go beyond your religion and see the fact of your religion, the beforeness. All of these, all of these understandings you could describe as a science. They're a science. They're a, and science means to know. But what people are under, look, under overlooking is the underlying ens, essence. Gosh, my words, the underlying essence. Consciousness, which is cone science, to know with. It's the, less, the essence that allows you to know. Does that make sense? So go back to consciousness. So is the knowing within. Is the knowing, it's consciousness is the knowing with. Mm. The knowing with, the aliveness that allows us to know. And it's a unique knowing. We're going to resonate with some and not with others. We have a hand up. Oh, yes. So um, Rick. Yeah, Rick, go ahead, Rick. Yeah, um, you guys are a breath of fresh air. Um, Thank you. The uh, uh, first time I've uh, really um, experienced uh, experienced you guys. I, I I heard the name and and you, of course you had an intriguing title, <laughs> so I, I became quite curious. Um, now, didn't uh, listening to all the Sid tapes and various other things? Didn't didn't he say not to follow him? like to go live your life. And I found that more powerful because he said, go live your life. And I've often been confused when listening to other practitioners and people that are sharing and have, have it programs and that is I hear a lot of reciting and not a lot of what is your real experience? What are you having right now? I know what it says in the law of attraction. I know what it says in the three principles. I know it all, but I want to hear what you're experiencing. What is your unique experience with that, which you're pointing to in that little box down there? So, um, yeah, no, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. And I'm, I'm often confused, particularly when I hear Sid say, Go live your life. So I just wanted to share that and thank you for being so open. Thank you, Rick. Beautiful. Thank you, Rick. Yes, yes, did Sid did say that. In fact, he said that to me once and it was really helpful because I was getting in my head about it and I just forgot about it. And then I started to understand the nature of it a lot more. And it's beautiful. Mm. Bria has a question. Oh, um, yeah, go ahead, Bria. Oh, hi. Um, so I guess what I was saying in my comment is like when we try and take truth and stick it in a box or in institutionalize it, that seems to be where it runs into problems, right? The rigidity sets in. And if you don't do this, you're not following. But what happens, I think, and this is what I want to ask a little bit about is, hmm, all these things have good things in them, right? Like people are bringing up different religions. I've mm. been in things too that I, I got out of that. I was in a cult once and I got out of it. But I mean, there were really good things in there. I mean, that's kind of how I mm. got in there in the first mm. place, right? Like nobody joins a cult and goes, oh, I want to go into something horrible. Let me sign up, right? Like <laughs> it's because there are good things in there that pull you in. Um so I guess what I want to ask is, you know, and maybe for everybody is like when we come across things and it has good things in it, how do we avoid, I don't know, getting in, into something that takes away our inner voice or takes away, I mean, I don't think I would do that now because I've been through that experience, you know, I've been through that and out, maybe like you two, Rudy, like we would know the signs or we wouldn't necessarily fall into that. But a lot of people do fall into it because if someone comes along and says, like, here's all this wonderful stuff I have for you and you just have to follow me. That's all you got to do. Just follow me and you get all these wonderful things. It's like the little candy house in Hansel and Gretel or something, you know, people kind of do a lot. 
And particularly if they don't have that inner alignment, right? They do. Like they're looking for that. They're looking for something. And someone comes along and says, hey, I have this great stuff. You just have to follow me. Follow these rules. Follow me. Follow mm -hmm. this doctrine. You'll have it, you know? So how do you, what would you say to people to like, I mean, I have my own opinion about what to say, and I'm writing a book too, and I may say things in it about this, but I'm just here. What would you say to people to kind of like avoid or not fall into that trap, you know, to lose themselves, like you said, lose their voice. Beautiful. Um, I'd like you guys, if you'd like to answer, Bria, type it in the chat, but quite short so we can read Ooh, it out. Beautiful. So while I'm talking, if you guys would like to respond to that, put it in the chat, but not mega long. Mm. Um, so while I'm talking, that will give you the time to do that if you'd like to respond to, to, to Bria. Um, um, so for my experience Bria when someone says follow me that's a sure sign because you want people to follow themselves mm -hmm. follow their inner and also again this is a belief I don't know if it's a true or not but from my experience anything that warms your heart up makes you more embraceive of diversity makes you love people more is you know the hot and i don't know if you in america do you play the hot and cold game when you're a kid mm -hmm. that yeah, yeah okay mm -hmm. so yeah. there's the hot and cold game where you're walking and they go hotter hotter colder colder and you try and find something if you go to the warmth of your heart is this making me argue in facebook groups is this making me more judgmental of other people is this making me more you don't get it and i do that's the wrong direction so whatever you're following, it has to, has to, has to be in the direction of compassion because everything else is literally a distraction. So yes, you can get some wonderful teachers and they do talk about some incredible truths. But if generally you're feeling more us and them mm -hmm. rather than an us, it's kind of going in the wrong direction again. What do you say, honey? Yeah, it's I call it your intuitive essence and your intuitive essence is um, understanding and honoring that other people will see things differently. But you your intuitive essence speaks to you and I describe it as a knowing without knowing how you know. There's no words to wrap around it. Mm. Um, these are responses. Um, keep yourself open, be eclectic so you can work with yourself yes. and others. Um, trust your intuition, get quiet and listen, listen to how you feel inside. Understand you are nature and nothing else is needed. Mm -hmm. um, inner GPS, set by intention. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. um, when people tell you they have the answer and you can't talk about it outside the group. <laughs> good one <laughs> uh so i need glasses um when i'm doing stuff with others i tell them i can't give them anything they already have it beautiful, beautiful. um there is a hierarchy that breaches their own guide breaches their own guidelines and then people get invited based on their personality and who gives them and who gives a nod then run a mile mm. don't know if i articulate that very well yeah but there's certain things that jason said there um Thank you. I believe we all have to have our own unique um, parent earth. It's only by doing that you learn and grow and be able to discern, to listen to your inner self feelings. Yes, intuitive essence, as Jules says. Connect with the oneness of nature. Become the expert of you. Beautiful. Mm. Become the expert of you. Follow what makes you smile and your heart sing. Beautiful, Cheryl. Um, for me, it's a human experience. Who says what is right or wrong? Follow the fun and what you feel like experiencing. Uh, Rudy, I remember you saying the three Ps are not a prescription. They are a description. Are you saying in your experience other teachers prescribe rather than describe? Um, I'll get back to that. If you ever hear follow me, go the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the... um. The original articulation of the principles is a description. It's describing the nature of things. Okay. 
But then we can innocently humanize it and say, don't use a diagram because Sid didn't use diagrams. Um, you can come up with all kinds of things. Oh, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. Or you have to teach in this way and not teach in that way. So ultimately, yes, the principles are a description. And in my mind, again, apart from holanity, which pretty much come from Jules, and I'm just quite good at articulating it. Um, still to this day, I think the three principles is a very articulate description of the nature of life. When you go back to the nature of it rather than a lot of or some of the teaching of it. Uh, Xander says anything that's not truth is a conceptualization. And I and that's beautiful. Absolutely. But we only have our own unique perspective on the oneness. We only see things via our own internal perception. So I don't know what the truth is but I know what resonates with me and how I see it. I know it's true that I don't know what other people see, but I can honor that. Mm -hmm. So I know that I don't know. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> it's a whole ality. There's everything. There isn't anything that it isn't. And when I experience that, I got more curious in life, in people and experiences. There was a disarming. I can't judge people. I do know that the people that seemingly hurt me, seemingly hurt me. We're all one. We're hurting inside. Yeah. And they didn't know. They, they felt fear. They felt a disconnection. They felt a anxiousness. And they created life from that space, from that space of perspective. I want to go to Bob. Bob has a question. He's been okay. patiently I've, holding his sure, hand. Sure, go to Bob. I've just put some links in that don't work. I've just seen. Um, so I'll put another link in. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it before we go to Bob, just because I'm gonna completely forget otherwise. <laughs> that link there is a link to a video series on on holality, which we're kind of calling an expanded. Inside, inside out. Inside out understanding. We're it, not saying anything different. Right. Well, we we. We're acknowledging that, yes, we experience by an internal perception and yes, we're connected or entangled within this larger field, but also the, the teaching of holality, which actually I've learned from Jules via your experience of in between life and death um, is different from traditional inside out teaching. So you can find out more about it on that link there. Mm -hmm. And now that I've said that, let's go to Bob. Hi, Bob. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to thank you so much for this. It's uh, very informative, obviously, from the heart. I'm sorry you went through what you went through, but there are always organizations, and when something's that organized, that happens. Sid always said, you know, if you're listening to a tape and you get something out of it, just throw the tape out, and you've mm -hmm. got it. it. It comes from within. He, he never looked for followers. He didn't want followers. He just pointed to the truth and, and wanted to be left out of it. And I think that the people who teach, uh, I like what Mark Howard said, share what you know or share who you are and teach what you know. And that mm -hmm. gets beyond all of the other things that you, know, you can get caught up in. So uh, I just love what you're sharing. I love your book. And... Uh, it's wonderful what you're doing, and I still love the three principles movies. Oh, so. perfect! <laughs> that's that's Bob. That's what we would like people. We 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 still want people to stay in love with the three principles mm. as an understanding, but we also want people to be able to see beyond innocent human articulations and ideas about the principles back to the essence mm. of it. Um, beautiful. Uh, yeah, Theo, go ahead, Theo. Hi, yeah. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Um, yeah, thanks so much for the, the uh, talk, you guys. Um, and uh, there was uh, one moment towards the end of uh, something you were saying, Rudy, when it just resonated very loud and clear uh, uh, through these headphones. But 
um, yeah, a very felt like um, <laughs> yeah, an, an important an important moment. Um, so thank you for that because um, it just just resonates. You know, when those moments when something resonates with with um, kind of your inner being. Um, and um, and I had that when I first um, was halfway through reading my first Three Principles book when I uh, heard a, an insight, you know. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, I had a question, which I, I thought I'd, it would be easier to speak rather than to, to write and uh, be misinterpreted where I'm coming from. But... <laughs> I just wondered if you'd like to say more about why you've created another name, i.e. Holality. Mm. And sure. yeah, just be interested to hear if there's more thought. Good that, question, really. my fine fellow. Very good question, my fine Thanks. fellow. So we'll just talk to Theo's question, then we'll go to Linda Ramis, who in my mind is probably the most amazing human in existence, but she's very humble. So I have to say that to just, just to make her go red. Well, we can't slow or speed up enough to tell her that because she's always on the go up i know some always mountain. hiking for months somewhere <laughs> um so again kind of out out of respect because i still very much respect the three principles as a teaching and i love not all but i love a lot of the teachers mm. and i love like you know, you know the community so the way in which we're teaching again is it, it teaches differently from traditional, whatever three principles facilitate, it teaches differently. And so out of respect, we've kind of stepped out of the teaching of the principles and created our own, our own river off because it teaches differently. And this was kind of like a, a direct experience. If you're not near death experience, we, yeah. we talk about well, polarities it's, and different it's, things. We honor. Uh, yeah. Mm. It teaches differently. It's, it's zoom. And it, it's, 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 mm. you know what, Theo, I put a link oh, yes. to the start here video. So if you scroll back up, click that and we've actually got six videos answering that question i see how okay um, i see yeah. how non-duality and the teaching of law of attraction and the experiences of the metaphysical are very they're all expressions of this oneness and i see how they all fit together yeah and i don't want to exclude yeah I honor I want to honor other expressions because mm. we're all expressions of this one. Yeah, many people follow non-duality and they follow the principles and they or they follow law of attraction and they don't seem to they they, they seem opposites or diametrically opposed or how does this fit with that? Holality isn't fitting these modalities together. It's dissolving them and unifying them back to one very simple power. And within that one power, there's fundamental laws, powers, principles. We talk about that. So you totally see, like we had someone who is very anti-law of attraction come one of our webinars. And at the end, she's like, oh my God, I totally see how that works. Yeah. We've had very judgmental people of non-duality um, non come on and go, oh my God, yeah, I kind of see the non-dual nature now, even though they don't like the non-dual nature so there's this imagine you've got a blender you've got the banana of the three principles i'm talking about teachings now the teaching of the three principles is a banana the teachings of law of attraction is like an orange the teaching of the metaphysical and the, or the science of consciousness is some blueberries i could keep going and you blend it all together and you've got this wholeness that's user friendly and very nutritious so you're not bouncing between different modalities is just this unification anyway that's all i can probably say for now on that but we go into it more on the start here videos i've put a link in the chat so the have free. a look at that and, that and obviously free for you guys um yes linda go ahead linda oh hey rudy guys what's going on here is just what you talk about Polarity, duality, ebb and flow. You know, for this to exist at all, you have to have opposites. And right now, 
you're kind of stepping away as the opposite in order to see to have a, a another vision of you know the experience um a thousand people are going to be meeting in london that's a hell of a form and so to maintain that form there this is what happens we're just doing something that's totally biblical <laughs> yeah yeah you know and and so i mean it i love that you you have because of who you are and the people who know you and actually the influencer that you are, you're articulating this opposite. Mm. And so it's just a part of the continuum, you know, um, and I, you are teaching, you know, you're teaching the principles as the truth that Sid points, was able to point out in his words, because that's all that there is. There's only, like you say, there's only one thing. Right. Mm -hmm. and, yes. But what you're pointing out is sort of like you're pulling the curtain back and showing the wizard back there. It's like he's trying to, you know, in the form that's creating. It's sort of you are a canary in a coal mine. Look, guys, look what you're doing. Heads up, alert, alert, alert. And whether um, you know a lot of people see that or not, you know, you are. Uh, flashing, you know, saying alert, alert, let's, looks what's happening. Mm. And it's an opportunity for people to see what we're doing. Because from day one, I heard that guy said, Sid said, don't be a follower. From day mm. one, when people were telling other people, you can't continue with 12 step. And they were saying, oh, hell yes, I am. And they were the most powerful teachers we had going. Right, And you know, Beverly. <laughs> From the day one so this is not new stuff i've heard this for the 25 years i've been involved and i've seen the people who have been judgmental and i've seen the rigor oh you want to talk about judgment you weren't even around mm -hmm. but then it flowed back people let go they lightened up because so much reaction came against it so you're providing a, a reaction to what's going on and whether or not you know um people see it or not i've seen people letting go a lot of their judgment. I've seen very judgmental people become a lot less judgmental. So this was just really, really good. And and, and Rudy, I mean, your, your feelings, you both of you guys, your feeling is just the message that resonates. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Yeah. Thanks for all your private messages, too. <laughs> Yeah, although I have to say, you guys, at the moment, I was quite nervous about talking about this, kind of feeling a bit so. Um, mm. But you know what? Nerves and fear shouldn't put you off doing anything. It's just telling you that you're about to grow. Right. Like grit and conflict and um, difficulty and anxiety, they're all natural implications of growth. <laughs> Think about, I'm so sorry to any students because I say this over and over again, but think about those pebbles that are on the beach that tumble around, how much grit and exposure they needed to have to birth those smooth glass-like like surfaces. Grittiness births the smooth mm -hmm. and then it gets gritty again and then we birth the smooth. We're on a perpetual state of becoming as humans. And this is what it's all about. So I've just typed, someone wanted the links again. I've just put the link back into the start here videos of, of what we teach and the link to the book above that for anyone who's interested. Okay, just we'll, we'll go to wrap it up. I just want to reiterate again, guys, that um, you are a boundless, edgeless presence of love mm -hmm. having seeming separation to experience itself by the human experience because you are that and you already are that which you're seeking the answer is within the answers lie within use a teaching or a teacher to help guide you back within yourself 
but don't see them as a medium for you to attain a something or get to a place. A good teacher is a mirror and it reflects you back at yourself. And you see the nature within you. It's the, it's the heartbeat of the universe. It's the soul of the universe is within each and every single one of you. And I just, I don't know. I just, I just love you all so, so, so much. We love you all so much. And we want you to fall back in love with yourself. I mean, I'm sure many of you are, but you do that by going within. It's not in a book. It's not in another person. It's within you, mm. just as you are. Hence why in our holality training, we encourage people to go back within because from that embodiment, that inner knowing, everything becomes a lot easier in life. And we really appreciate you being with us and coming on this webinar and spending the time with us. <laughs> I haven't even been to gallery. I'm going to go back now so I can see everybody. I know. I'm sorry. I'm busy. Man. Oh, there you go. There oh. you all are. Oh, beautiful. Oh, it's nice to see you with my eyeballs. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, lots of love to you. Um, bless all of you. Thank you for being with us. Oh, and um, Okay. Sorry. Yeah, What's we're that? way over time. We're like half an hour over, 40 minutes yeah. over time. Yeah. Oh. Yes, Susan, no more sleepless nights for you. No, no, I'm going to sleep better tonight now that we've yeah. done this. Okay, guys, lots of love. Remember, compassion. Everything else is a distraction. Everything else is a distraction. Go back to love. Yeah. Understanding. Understanding the love <sighs> that you are birds that compassion. Understanding your uniqueness and honoring your uniqueness birds that compassion. Mm. Yeah. Lots of love to you guys. Yeah. Take care. Bless you. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you.